This is the story of two valiant peoples, two ancient cultures, two neighbors who've stood by each other over millennia, of a friendship that has stood the test of time. The Kabuliwala, the Afghan trader traveling routinely to India, immortalized by Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore, is not just imagination. He is a real-life figure who lives in the hearts of Indians. He's the symbol of an age-old friendship that has stood the test of time. Afghanistan and India have trusted each other and gained from each other since the beginning of time. Constant interchange and people-to-people -people contact has been the bedrock of this mutual, symbiotic, lasting relationship at all times. This story starts when the Aryans of Central Asia traveled out. Two centers of Aryan civilization arose almost simultaneously. Aryana, or the present day Afghanistan, and Aryavart, or India. The ancient land west of Indus finds mention in the earliest of Indian texts, the Rig Veda, and Panini, the father of Sanskrit grammar, is believed to be from this area. The ancient city of Gandhar, or shall we say Kandahar, finds a mention in the oldest of Indian epics, the Mahabharat. Buddhism traveled from India to Afghanistan. This synergy inspired the Gandhara school of art and created world-renowned icons. India and Afghanistan became an integral part of the Kushan Empire under Kanishk in the second century AD. The early medieval centuries saw dynasties like the Ghaznis, the Ghoris, the Lodhis, the Khiljis, the Abaks, and then the Mughals arrive at the subcontinent from Khurasan or modern-day Afghanistan. They came to conquer and became part of the Indian syncretic mainstream. Tijarat, trade with India, has always been an important aspect of this enduring relationship. Sher Shah Suri, an Afghan born in Sasaram in the eastern Indian state of Bihar, dreamt of linking the Indian heartland with Kabul. He is the architect of the Shahi Sadak, which was rechristened by the British as the Grand Trunk Road. The trade artery that joined Kabul to Kolkata, the road for which Kipling wrote, such a river of life that ever was. 
and this river of life nourished a new lifestyle, a new religion, a new architectural style, a new art, a new music and the seeds of a new language. Amir Khusro, considered the father of the modern Indian lingua franca, was of Afghan origin. The Sufis of the Chishtia tradition were a gift from Afghanistan to India's spiritual and cultural spectrum. Many of these customs and styles are alive in both India and Afghanistan till today. In Rampur, where large populations of Pathans still live, the local culture reflects many flavors of Afghan lifestyle. It all started in 1704. Uh, we are basically Rohila Pathans and uh, our ancestors were traders from Kandahar in Afghanistan. The strongest point of Afghani culture in India is Rampur, is this region. Because everybody has their origins in Afghanistan. Not only the royal family but all the others as well because they were nobility, they were the common man. And in fact, um, the, the Rohila Sardars who died in the battle the Mohallas in Rampur, they are all named after them. Rohilas were basically fighters. Rampuri Chaku, I think, originated from that part of the Afghani uh, culture. Then the diet, the food that is eaten here, it's mainly uh, me a lot of meat, you know, a lot of red meat. And of course, the clothes which we wear, as I'm wearing the shalwak, and this, of course, you can, you know, Afghanistan, everybody wears these kind of clothes. <laughs> The Kabali, which is here called the Char Bet. It is actually the Afghan improvisation of the Kabali. They still use a lot of Pashto words. In Hindustan, we are very happy. We have a lot of people who have a lot of love and love. We have a lot of 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 love. Over the centuries, Pathans of Afghan origin settled in many centers across India. They are proud of their Afghan roots and their Indian identities. जो भी हिंदुस्तान का टच करेगा या कुछ भी करेगा उस पर अगर हम लोग अमर हो जाएगा आर्डर हो जाएगा तो हम लोग जान भी दे सकते उसके बाद तो इतना बोल दिया तो As India intensified its struggle for independence Frontier Gandhi Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan symbolized the spirit of non-violence and during that heyday of anti-colonial zeal, Kabul played host to prominent Indian leader Subhash Chandra Bose. The year 1947, India becomes independent and the historical relationship between the two neighbors is now set to attain new heights. A great relationship is born, born of free choice. What started with Prime Minister Nehru's emphasis on Panchil and the non-aligned movement flowered with Mrs. Indira Gandhi's constant support to the Afghan people. As this friendship grew stronger, a constant stream of people of Afghan origin added their own hues to independent India's pluralistic identity.
محبت میرا ایمان The large hearted Afghan was an oft repeated and cherished image in the all pervasive Bollywood movies and evoked a warm response in the audience. The last decades of the 20th century were turbulent times for Afghanistan. The age-old warmth, characteristic of a good neighbor, showed up whenever the Afghan people needed support. In those days of uncertainty, Afghans saw India as a home away from home, where they were welcome, where they were taken care of, where they were safe. In India, there is a lot of peace. People बहुत शांति लोग हैं, लड़ाई नहीं है, बात ये है कि या इंडिया में हम सेफ हैं। The long-standing ties, the deep understanding, commonality of culture, and the freedom to learn new skills while being one with their roots was at the heart of this confidence. अफगानी बच्चे अपने देश में दूर मगर एजुकेशन में दूर नहीं क्योंकि यहाँ उसका अपने मादरतांग भी साथ साथ दूसरा सब्जेक्ट के साथ सीखेगा जैसे दूसरा सब्जेक्ट हिंदी इंग्लिश मात से साथ साथ में इसके लिए फैसिलिटी है कि अपनी मादरतांग भी सीखेगा। My name is Allah. I am in class eight. I want to be a doctor and the education of India is very high standard. So I want to study here. In the future when I become a doctor, I will go to Afghanistan and uh, I will help uh, the people of Afghanistan. My name is Kamal and I am in the 7th class. I want to be a big engineer. My name is Zora and I am in the 2nd class. I am in India and I want to be a teacher in the world. I want to open a school in Afghanistan. The events of September 11, 2001 shook the world and ushered a new era in Afghanistan. A new era of turmoil followed by new prospects to reconstruct this war-shattered nation. Technology or training, rebuilding or resources, India was committed to rejuvenating Afghanistan. Thousands of Afghans chose to come to India and heal their wounds. The Afghanistan that I have been here, I came to India because of the fact that Afghanistan is a good country. I have been able to visit Afghanistan and I have been able to visit Afghanistan. This is my niece. Uh, she's no hearing, no speaking, and also almost she's eight years. So we come to India that we want to uh, treat uh, for this girl that uh, she will hear and speaking. The treatment is very cheap, uh, and they have very advanced doctors also, and also advanced machines, advanced devices. I hope in, in this uh, hospital uh, that treatment will be done so again we will uh, return to Afghanistan by very really happiness students media military doctors entrepreneurs artists parliamentarians diplomats professionals they all chose to come to India to learn the skills needed to match all the facets of reconstruction, to learn from India's experience, to avail of its infrastructure and train themselves. 
when uh, this idea came about to have a training abroad, uh, we thought about uh, the India, uh, where uh, we expected to receive uh, a high quality training. The program was very effective. We learned a lot of new areas of mining and especially environmental aspects of mining. Afghan youth, moved by the human tragedy in their country, came to India to be trained. I'm Halima Basiri from Afghanistan. I'm second year in the Lady Harding Medical College and uh, I'm scholarship from the ICCR. I choose medical because I like to become a doctor to serve my people. India produces the best doctors in the world, so I choose India and also it is near to my country. The Indian government joined hands with the Afghan government to provide scholarships to thousands of Afghan students. We need uh, education in Afghanistan, uh, not only in uh, some uh, uh, engineering or uh, medical, but we have, we need also some other uh, courses, some other degrees. So my dream was to come uh, to India and study here and go back to Afghanistan um, because Afghanistan needs us. I got the opportunity to study in India in Aligarh Muslim University. And uh, right after my graduation, I, I uh, got a job in ISA Afghanistan Investment Support Agency. As I have finished my studies, I will go back to my country because my country is really, really in need. And I am thankful to India because I got educated in India. The non-government sector contributed with skills enhancement and infrastructure development. India's top industrial institutions stepped in with all their might to rebuild the skills lost in the times of war and to create new openings for Afghan businesses. In several sectors, there are opportunities for Afghan businesses to, uh, to start business in India. And uh, there are several sectors in India that welcome Afghan businesses to have opportunities. I could pinpoint a few of them, such as the um, transport sector, telecommunications, agri-products, textile. They have been always mentioned by Afghan businesses. Um, it's not only that, there have been along a very high demand by Afghan businesses to be part of several opportunities in India. The Indian investors could not only look forward to investing, but uh, they, there are possibilities of joint ventures also, and there are, uh, and in probably in some areas, there could be some sharing of the learning experiences also from the Afghani businessmen. So that is what uh, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of mutual exchange economic uh, activity that can really happen between the two countries. The age-old trade links between the two nations revived as the Indian markets provided new scope to Afghan businessmen. India International Trade Fair 2009, New Delhi. The participation by Afghan entrepreneurs and the response of the Indian people is its own testimony. The Afghan section has a large participation by women entrepreneurs. The status of women in modern India inspires their Afghan sisters. کلتور فرهنگ خانمای افغان هم مانند کلتور فرهنگ خانمای هندی هستند. میخوان که ما هم پیشرفت کنیم و ما میخوایم که در آینده یک ارتباط بزنس و تجارت به اونا داشته باشیم. هم لوگ چاهتی نه جس طرح یه ها هندی هستند و ما سکار کرده و کام کرده اون کلی آزادی هی نه جاها گم نه پینه پینه سب کچی. تو هم چاهتی که هم لوگ مرک میبی یهی افغانی اومن کلی بیه یه اپرچونیتی ها. And modern India itself inspires Afghans. India welcomes Afghanistan in its comedy. 
it was a great votary of Afghanistan becoming part of the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation or SAG. Proud of its cultural pluralism, tolerance and its resilient spirit, India is a responsible global presence. It's a river of life that accepts all those who come to its shores, enables them and gets enriched in doing so. We have come all the way from Afghanistan and this is, this is Kabul! South Asian Band Festival and um, uh, we came here and played in Delhi uh, and it was a very exciting a very good experience. Uh, people liked our music a lot and they were very uh, exciting and we were excited too. The Afghans living in India carry forward an age-old friendship as they appreciate the warmth of a good neighbor. Second day, jo hai India. Jaise ki Afghan ka dil saaf hai, usi tarah Hindustan ka dil bhi saaf hai. Main har ek Indian mein apna Afghan bhai ko dekh sakta hu. I can share my problems with my Indian friends. All Indian friends, ham apko bahut chate hai. India mein ko acha lagta hai, parna acha lagta hai. In fact, India is a home away from home for them. India feels like home. I came here in 2006 to study and I fell in love with India because it reminds me of my country. I have visited many places in India named after Afghan warriors who came here a thousand years ago. I realize how far back this friendship goes. Many Afghan comes so many years back and settle here in India. I could see their imprint everywhere. How much in common, how much we share. Afghan India do still rocks! Afghan India do still rocks! Afghan India do still rocks! Thank you.